Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sevy. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering and analytics with Alteryx and Spotfire. Thanks for tuning in today to learn how to use an Iron Python script to navigate through Spotfire pages. I'm covering this topic because a user reached out to me on LinkedIn last week with questions about an Iron Python script he found in the TIBCO community. And if you go to my full blog post, I have linked to that article in the main post. The script attaches to a drop-down property control and helps users jump from page to page. Buttons are usually my go-to navigation medium, but if you have a lot of pages, buttons can take up a lot of space. So using a drop-down really helps you maximize real estate while still giving full navigational capabilities. Now, before we dive into the script, I wanna make sure you understand the navigation options in Spotfire so it's clear why the script is so useful. I'll talk page navigation options, and then I'll show you some navigation with action controls before explaining the Iron Python script. All of the page navigation options in Spotfire can be accessed by right-clicking on any one of the page tabs at the bottom of the screen. You'll see here that there are three options available, and if you're on a more recent version of Spotfire, you'll have a fourth option that's something like off or no navigation. I'm not quite on the latest version yet. I'm only on 10.3, so this is what I have. Spotfire is going to default to tiled tabs, which looks a whole lot like Excel, where you just have a, page, a tab for each page at the bottom of the screen. Users can click on all of the tabs. And I believe in more recent versions of Spotfire, you now have the functionality to hide tabs. The second option is called step-by-step. -step. And with step-by-step, -step, you get a new menu on the right-hand side of the screen with previous and then you can't see the page names, but you see a number. This is a useful method when, when the order of pages is important and the analysis should be presented in a step-by-step -step flow. And users can always navigate forwards and backwards with previous and next. And then the last option available is called history arrows. And with history arrows, users can't see all of the pages. They can see the page that they are currently on and they can move forward and backward. And with this option, the expectation is that the developer is going to provide action controls, buttons, links, or images that the user will click on as the main navigation, and then they can go forward or backward with these arrows. Whenever we talk about action controls, uh, that's another great way to navigate within Spotfire. And action controls refer to buttons, links, or images. And that's what this is here in my text area is a navigational button that will take the user to a page that I've called Listbox. I'm currently in the middle of uh, writing a blog series on property controls, and so this is the, the DXP project that I'm using for it. I did drop downs last week, and I'll continue with Listbox list boxes uh, next week. So that's kind of what you're looking at. So action controls are added only to text areas, and you can create them by right-clicking and selecting either Edit Text Area or Edit HTML. From within this dialog, you click on the Insert Action Control button, and then you type in text that you want the user to see for navigation, like navigation. And since I already have a button, I'll add this one as a link. And then you have available actions, and if you just expand this, Pages and Visualizations, you'll see it gives you a list of pages. And then if I just click on this, that is going to navigate to that page. So I will click OK got added at the top. All right, I'll just put a little break in there. Make sure I have opening and closing tags. And I will save it and exit. And now you see that there is a link to go to the navigation page and there's a button to go to the list box page. So those are several different ways in which users can navigate. Now, I know what you came for was the Iron Python script and I've already input it into this project, and I will show it to you here, and then we'll create it from scratch so that you know how to do it. So this is a drop-down property control. It's attached to an Iron Python script, and all I have to do is tell it where I want to navigate to. The name of the page, and it'll take me there. If I right-click in my text area to edit HTML, and take a look at the property control. You'll see that it's called Page Navigator. It's configured with fixed values. And what you have in the display name doesn't matter, but the value does need to exactly match your page names. 
And then there's an Iron Python script called Navigator attached to it. And this is what that script looks like. And you can see it's just referencing the name of the document property. All right, let's create this one from scratch. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna create a new page. And since I know I'm gonna do a list box multi select eventually, we'll just call this page list box multi. I will add a text area. And I'm gonna actually real quick go back to this so I can copy the script because I, I don't have it memorized. And the first thing that we're gonna do is create our property control. So we're gonna insert a drop-down list. I'm going to call this one my control. And I will create it with fixed values. Okay, and then we click on the script button and if, if you are trying to replicate this in other pages, you can reuse the same script. So if you've already got it in here once, you don't need to create it multiple times. I'm just creating it for example. And I'll create a new one called demo script. And I'll paste it in there. And I think I called that my control. I hope I did, otherwise I'll have to come back and do it over and I will run the script and I don't get any errors, that's great. I'll click okay and I'll click okay. And just as a, a notation, if your page names change, you'll need to come in and update this. So I'll click okay, exit out of my text area and oh, I do this occasionally. I think I connected it to the wrong property control. For whatever reason, when you come out of that script dialogue, it doesn't always select the same control that you are on. So I need to tell it that that property control is my control. And it's weird because now it has also changed my options. I'm missing my list box multi. So I will update that again. I think this is a, a good tutorial. You see where it can kind of go wrong for you. Okay, I'm gonna click okay. And now, I'm gonna say, take me to the list box multi-page and it's taking me to that page. Take me to navigation, we're in navigation, and take me to drop down, which is the page that I've mainly populated so far. Now, before I wrap up, I want to actually explain what this Iron Python script is doing and how it works. So I'm gonna navigate back to the script. Okay, so what's happening here is we have a developer created object called DP that is equal to the document property called my control. Because DP is a developer created object, this could be anything that you want it to be. And as long as you make sure that DP here, if you name it something different, is also updated here, it'll still work just fine. And DP is, is equal to whatever the value being passed through your property control is. And in this case, we're passing through string values that are the name of the page. And then the next part of the script says for page in document.pages. Document.pages is a reference to the API and page is a, a user created object. So page could be something else, but document.pages cannot be anything else that has to, that has to stay as it is. And then the script is using an if statement that says if page.title equals dp, make it the active page reference. So basically, if the string being passed through the document property as referenced by the object page is equal to the title of the page, then make that page the active page reference. So that's what it's doing. That's how it works. dp is a user created object as is page document.properties, document.pages, title, and then document.active page reference are all API references. And so those can't change, those have to be the same. So that explains how you can navigate within a Spotfire project within pages using a dropdown property control and an Iron Python script. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks y'all, have a good weekend.